Genetic testing has been on the rise. Whether you're using 23andMe or trying to figure out what breed your dog is, all it takes is a little bit of saliva and some lab magic, and suddenly you know that genetic code and all that family history. So how does this happen? Well, your DNA contains the instructions to build the unique individual that is you, and you inherit some of your DNA from each of your parents by inheriting pieces of their code. So how is that DNA used to create traits that are uniquely you? In this video, we're going to talk about how DNA is transcribed to create those traits. The DNA contains the code for your body, but what is that code really? Let's unzip the DNA. Remember those bases from the previous video? adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. Those bases create the code. And since a gene is a sequence of a lot of bases, there are a lot of possible codes. So what do the cells do with the code? They use it to make proteins. But first, we have to turn that code into something that's easier for the cells to read. The first step is called transcription. What would you do if I asked you to transcribe something? you'd write it down. And DNA transcription is a lot like that. RNA polymerase reads the DNA and creates a copy, which we call messenger RNA or mRNA. This mRNA is then used in the next step, translation, to make the protein. So let's look at how that copying of the DNA occurs. Transcription occurs in three steps. The first one is initiating starting to make the copy. The second one is elongation, making the copy longer. And the third is termination, stopping the copy. We transcribe a single gene at a time and the DNA code tells us where to start and stop. During initiation, the RNA polymerase binds to a specific sequence called a promoter. These promoters are unique for the different genes being transcribed which allows us to only target the genes that we want to use. The polymerase unzips the DNA so that it can access the sequence of nitrogenous bases that it wants to copy. This separates the DNA into two strands. We call one of these the coding strand, the one we want to create a copy of, and the other the template strand, which is the one we're going to use to build that copy. When we're making the mRNA copy of the DNA, we're going to use that template strand and fit nitrogenous bases on it, like fitting together pieces of a puzzle. Similar to DNA, these are gonna to go together in a very specific fashion. Cytosine will always bond with guanine, thymine will bind with adenine, but there is one change, and that's that in RNA, there is no thymine. So anytime we put a thymine in, instead we have a different nitrogenous base called uracil. Thymine and uracil are analogous. Structurally, they're a little bit different, but the idea is the same, kind of like ice cream and gelato. So let's try to write a sequence. Start with this DNA sequence, and I want you to write what the opposite strand would look like. Press pause in your video and Press play when you're ready to continue. So, how'd you do? Your strand should look something like this. Remember that when we take this coding strand and we look at what the template strand would look like, we're going to bind guanine to cytosine and thymine to adenine, creating this sequence. So now that we've taken that DNA coding strand and we've made a template strand, we're gonna to pretend to be RNA polymerase and we're going to make the corresponding mRNA strand. Remember that when you're making an RNA strand, you're not going to use thymine. Instead, adenine is going to bind to uracil. Let's look at the three strands together. Notice that the mRNA copy of the DNA template strand looks like the coding strand. The only difference is that the thymines have been replaced with uracil. Transcription is going to continue like this until that RNA polymerase reaches a sequence of bases that tells it to terminate the sequence. One of the ways that this termination happens is that the final sequence is rich in cytosine and guanine. Since the cytosine and guanine on the mRNA are a little attracted to each other, they're going to create kind of 
a loop. We call it a hairpin loop. And this hairpin loop makes it so that that RNA polymerase falls off of the DNA template strand, ending the transcription. If you transcribe something, you probably wanna go back later and make some edits, and your mRNA isn't that different. It goes through something called RNA processing. During RNA processing, coding regions of the mRNA called exons are separated from non-coding regions called introns. The exons are stitched together and stabilizing sequences called the five prime cap and poly A tail are added to keep the mRNA stable until it can be translated. For a long time, we thought that introns were junk DNA, never to be heard from again. But now we know that sometimes those introns can recombine and remix to make new genes. After all this editing, the final mRNA sequence exits the nucleus and heads to the ribosome for translation. But that's in our next video. First, we need to do a quick recap. DNA is unzipped into a coding strand in a template strand. RNA polymerase binds to that template strand to transcribe it, creating mRNA. Transcription is going to occur in three steps, initiation, elongation, and termination. And when that transcription is done, that sequence is going to look a lot like the coding strand from the DNA, except since it's RNA, all of the thymines will be replaced by uracils. But that's not it for the mRNA. Before it gets shipped off for translation, that strand needs to be cleaned up and stabilized. So now you understand transcription. In the next video, we're going to talk about how this transcribed piece of mRNA is going to be turned into a protein through a process called translation. Stay tuned.